So I'm doing my uh, presentation on the drug amphetamine, and there it is, uh, the chemical structure there, and it's IUPAC name, one phenyl propyl amine. Um, so first I'm going to dive into some background information er, first. Amphetamine is in the class of drugs known as stimulants, and some stimulants that you may already be familiar with include caffeine, which is found in coffee and energy drinks, nicotine, which is found in uh, cigarettes, and cocaine, which is found in the 1980s. <laughs> and uh, unlike caffeine, nicotine, and cocaine, which are all natural products, I mean, they are uh, extracted naturally from plants. Amphetamine is a synthetic compound, and it is not known to be found in nature. Um, one group in the late 90s had some research saying that they did, but it was never again proven that way, and it was thought to be more from contaminated samples than anything else. Uh, it was first synthesized in 1887 by Lazar Edelanu, I don't know how to say that name. So anyways, um, amphetamine, uh, its uses, it's used to promote wakefulness, alertness, uh, while reducing fatigue and appetite. And uh, you may be familiar already with uh, amphetamine used in uh, different types of drugs for uh, attention deficit disorder and that promoting wakefulness, alertness, and getting rid of fatigue, but it was originally used as a dietary aid and hence its use in reducing the appetite. Um, it's found in many different prescription medications such as Adderall, Dextrostrat, and Benzedrine. Uh, Adderall and Dextrostrat are both uh, medicines for attention deficit disorder and Benzedrine was um, a bronchodilator inhaler used to uh, reduce inflammation associated with asthma and that sort of thing. Um, abuses. Amphetamine is an addictive drug. Uh, it is commonly used, abused by soldiers, students, baseball players, and truck drivers. Uh, you, you, may, you may remember a couple years back, uh, a couple of American fighter pilots uh, killed some American soldiers in Afghanistan. Uh, the soldiers often use it to stay awake for long periods of time and focus during those times. Uh, students as well, like sometimes abuse Adderall to write papers late into the night and that kind of thing. Uh, baseball players, I don't know if anyone's watched a baseball game, but it's fucking boring, so imagine <laughs> doing that 180 times uh, during the course of the year. I would start to take some Adderall as well. Um, truck drivers also, uh, and actually yeah, uh, right next to uh, steroids and human growth hormone, Adderall was like next in line and the most abused drugs by baseball players, which, I don't know, struck me as a surprise. Uh, truck drivers also to do the long overnight hauls, they uh, frequently take Adderall as well. Um, it is colloquially known as speed, greenies, or crank, if you're looking for it on the street, which I don't advise, so I don't know how to put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, and, so, you, you might think this sounds pretty good to stay awake forever and uh, be really focused and complete all your work. Unfortunately, amphetamine abuse has a variety of unpleasant side effects, including anorexia, hyperactivity, dilated pupils, blood sugar, <laughs> flesh and restlessness, dry mouth, bruxism, headache, trachycardia, bronchocardia, trachypnea, hypertension, hypotension, fever, diphoresia, diarrhea, <laughs> constipation, blurred vision, aphasia, dyspnea, twitching, insomnia, numbness, palpitations, arrhythmia, tremors, dye, and or itchy skin, acne, pallor, convulsions, irritability, aggressiveness, psychosomatic disorders, psychomotor, uh, ah. Agitation, paranoia, excessive feelings of power and invincibility, <laughs> repetitive and obsessive behaviors, and in rare cases, even seizures, stroke, psychosis, heart attack, <laughs> suicidal ideation, and death. So, um, yes, think about that. <laughs> <laughs> related compounds. So, uh, it's related to a bunch of different compounds. So, there's uh, methamphetamine, MDMA, which is also known as ecstasy. Uh, list dexamphetamine and ephedrine. <coughs> Methamphetamine and MDMA are both uh, you, are commonly used narcotics, while uh, list dexamphetamine is another drug used for uh, attention deficit disorders, and ephedrine is used in nasal de um, decongestions. Um, so now I'm going to get into a little bit of the mode of action of uh, amphetamine, and it's primarily associated with uh, dopamine, serato serotonin, and norepinephrine uh, neurotransmitters, and you can see the structure of all these here. And notice the similarities between the structure uh, 
you can see how amphetamine uh, would react sim with uh, the similar neurotransmitters in your cell. And uh, for the purpose of the rest of this presentation, I'm just going to focus on how amphetamine works with, uh, in, with respect to dopamine. So, uh, amphetamine is very specific uh, in the different regions of the brain. So what that means is there are receptors that elicit one response from amphetamine. In some areas of the brain, they don't elicit any response at all. And uh, one thing that it does is it hijacks that dopamine reward system. And this also leads to the addictiveness and the hedonistic nature of the drug. So, the amphetamine increases the dopamine concentration in the synaptic cleft. And this increases the response from the postsynaptic neuron to start firing more dopamine. Um, amphetamine, which I started using abbreviations here because it's long words and that, uh, so interacts with dopamine vesicles in the vesicular monoamine transport to MAT2 protein, um, which is here. They didn't have a uh, nice structure yet. And amphetamine also interacts with the dopamine transport protein, the DAT protein. Um, so how does it work with VMAT2? So amphetamine acts with dopamine-carrying vesicles in the axon terminal of the neuron. Uh, amphetamine then interacts with the neural synaptic vesicles and it, this in, er, facilitates the uptake with the transporter VMAT2 in exchange for releasing of the dopamine. Um, and then with the DAT transport protein, uh, and, sorry, uh, the DAT transport the dopamine into the presynaptic neuron uh, by binding dopamine and after the phosphorylation it undergoes a conformational change which releases dopamine. Uh, however, in the presence of amphetamine, the dopamine transport protein undergoes a reverse reaction which sends the dopamine back into the synaptic cleft. So here's a nice diagram explaining all that. You've got your presynaptic terminal, the uh, dopamine carrying vesicles, and here's the synaptic cleft where, or in the gap where it will eventually start to build up the concentrations of dopamine based on the uh, effects of amphetamine. So this increase in concentration in dopamine is responsible for amphetamine's increase in alertness and concentration. Thank you very much. Any questions for that? On amphetamine, the molecule, can, yes. you, can you show it, actually? There's one. Oh. <laughs> there. OK. What is that squiggly line? Um, well, that just shows, because that's a, this is a chiral carbon right there. So that's just showing it without the uh, stereo selectivity there, um, because it, it's often found in racemic mixtures. So that way, uh, yeah, it's often found in racemic mixtures, so both the D, the dextrorotary, and the rotary forms are present there. It's just a way to show both forms in one drum. Any other questions? Um, you mentioned use in the military. Uh, I guess since alertness is one of the things it does to you, is it distributed by the military to their soldiers, or is it obtained illicitly by the soldiers? Um, it, uh, I, I didn't check up on this now, but I know it was, like in, one thing I was reading over was, in World War One. I, I believe it was, uh, they claimed that amphetamine won the Battle of Britain for the British. So back then it certainly was a uh, like standard issue, but uh, I, I don't know about its, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know about its um, use now. Because I know it's a, it's still a prescription drug, it's a, uh, it's a class two scheduled drug, so you need a prescription for it. So I, I could see it still being given out, but I, I'm not sure. I saw some more questions. Okay, so you were saying about, uh, there was that story a couple months ago or so where American soldiers... Then this was a, year, a couple years ago. But yes. Yes. Some yeah. American soldiers shot other American soldiers. Um, <laughs> was that related to the conflict? Like, was they well, because they, they, like, what, what had happened was they were up like when they go patrolling in helicopters they're patrolling for like 20 plus hours so they're hopped up on amphetamines which have a variety of uh, <coughs> uh, side effects like I mentioned there and so 
what the the theory was, I think, in the what was it, the report that they did um, was that it was a. Uh, they acted too quickly kind of thing, like they are irritable and just saw, like, oh, there's people in the hills and then started shooting before uh, really taking sight of what they had saw. So that's why amphetamine was attributed to that accident. So, more question. When that Lazar guy first isolated amphetamine, was he looking for something that would keep him up all night? Or? It's funny, I, mean, I, I, I didn't actually uh, check that out, but, um, yeah, number of, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if what he was, uh, I didn't look into the history of that, but a number of uh, prominent mathematicians, uh, Paul Ed Rose was one of them, was a uh, amphetamine abuser, certainly. And uh, there, there was a famous, there's a, the, the famous story that, uh, that uh, one of his colleagues bet him 500 bucks that he couldn't quit amphetamine for a week, and he did, but he said, uh, when I look at a piece of paper without amphetamine, all I see is a piece of paper. And when I have amphetamine, I see ideas and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about how it affects the dopamine transporter and dopamine. Mm -hmm. um, what other parts of the brain do you um, I just focused my research on this, but uh, the it has th stuff to do with uh, the serotonin uh, and norepinephrine as well. Norepinephrine also, I think, has inhibitory effects with uh, dopamine. Um, I focus most of my time on dopamine, so that's the yeah. major one. But there's lots of other things. Yeah, yeah. Major parts. Yeah, there. there's a lot of major ones as well. I would focus on that. All right. Thank you very much.